Wonderful. Thank you, Dennis. Announcements this morning. Uh, a number of us last Sunday evening came for the uh, Park and Pray, uh, the short worship service in the church parking lot. And God told us when it was time to be done because it started to pour down rain. But we, 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 uh, we had a good time in the meantime. We will plan to do another one in August, probably the 9th, but that's not a for sure, for sure, for sure yet. So keep, keep your ears tuned and you will hear. Next Sunday is our annual congregational meeting. You should get in the mail or by email this week a, um, a copy of the annual report and also a ballot for voting. Now, first of all, with the annual report, please read through it beforehand because I'm not going to have all of the committee chairs read their report to you. You can read that beforehand. And then if you have any questions, uh, be sure to bring those to the meeting. And the ballot is really for people who will not be able to be in the Zoom worship because we'll have the meeting right after the worship on Zoom. So you can use your ballot if you want to and send it back in. But if you do, please don't vote in person as well. You get one vote. I, I don't think there's anything that's controversial enough that we need to worry about people voting multiple times, but just vote once. I think that's all of the announcements that I have. Does anyone have any that I've missed? Okay, let's move on to our first hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Wasn't it supposed to be an opening prayer? Okay, Teo, we're not hearing anything, so let's back up and let Mary do the opening prayer, and then we'll do the Come Thou Fount and figure out why we weren't hearing anything. Go ahead, Mary, um, and give us the opening prayer. <clears throat> oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name to all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. Amen.
let's move on to the call to confession. Mary. Sisters and brothers, all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but we have received a spirit of adoption. Let us then confess our sin with the freedom of children who know how deeply they are loved. Please join in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, your creatures cry, creation groans, but we turn away. We surround ourselves with noise. We are quick to excuse ourselves from responsibility. We are too young or too old. We are too tired. We are too busy. It is hard to imagine that we might make a difference. Life-giving God, wash us clean. Restore our imaginations and our hearts. Let your courage and compassion flow through our veins until we love with abandon and our hearts reach out in blessing. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear the word of the Lord. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, God says unequivocally, irrevocably, you are my own. You are forgiven. And I need you to be about my business in the world. We are God's own. We are forgiven and we are called. Thanks be to God. Today for our response, we're going to do a, a different one than we've done before. Just follow after me uh, and don't unmute yourselves. Uh, just sing at home. I'll sing it and then everyone joins in. Alleluia, alleluia. received our peace from God, let us extend that peace on to others. You can unmute yourselves. The peace of Christ be with you. And also and with, with your spirit. And also with you. Peace, 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 peace and love. love. Peace. Love you. Peace, everybody. IGP. Good morning, Caleb. <laughs> Wish everybody a peaceful day. Amen. 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 Let us move on to uh, the prayer for illumination. Mary. Holy One, you love with a father's tenderness, a mother's zeal. Move now in our hearts. Breathe through the words we hear the songs we share, and the burdens we carry until we discover our purpose in your liberating love. For we long to join creation's praise and to shine with the mercy of the Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 First script, the first scripture it's from Psalm 86, verses 11 through 15, New Revised Standard Version. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to reserve, to revere your name. 
I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in the steadfast love and faithfulness. May God bless this reading from his word. Amen. I believe okay. Anthem. Do you guys know the uh, refrain, the chorus for this? So please do sing along. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, and worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find oh bless the lord oh my soul my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i'll worship your holy name oh bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Lord, I will worship Your holy name. Yes, I will worship Your holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. Amen. We worship your holy name. Our second scripture this morning is from the, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are, are unmuted. God. Did someone say something? Okay. Mute yourself if you're not involved, because otherwise I think something's going on. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, 
if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Moving on to our sermon this morning, will you pray with me? O Lord, our God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There is an idea that has been attributed to Christianity for a long time, the idea that body and spirit are two separate things, and the body, sometimes known as the flesh, is only going to lead you into trouble. That the physical body is something to rise above, ignore, pummel into shape, all in service of the spirit, also known as the soul. And I just want to say that I hope this has not been your experience in the church. I hope that you have not been taught to despise your body, for that is not what Christianity really teaches. True Christianity does celebrate the body, because we are, after all, created in the image of God. If we look at the Jewish roots of Christianity, we find that the Hebrew scriptures do not condemn the body, not at all. But if we look at first century Greek thinking, there we find a dichotomy between the body and the spirit. And early Christianity was very much influenced by Greek thought. And then of course, there were sex negative early church fathers like Augustine, who were convinced that the story of Adam and Eve was all about giving in to bodily lust. And that thinking was huge in Christianity for many hundreds of years. And then there's this eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, which has usually been translated according to that body versus spirit theology. So then, Paul says, brothers and sisters, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put, okay, um, let me read the one that's up in front of you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So there we are. Paul calls us to live not by the flesh, but by the Spirit. It sure sounds like we're being told that our bodies are bad and should be ignored. <clears throat> You've likely heard me before encouraging you when you're studying the Bible to check multiple translations. So let's look at a few other versions of these verses. Moving on to the New King James Version, which is an updated version of the translation originally made in 1526. It's pretty much the same except for using brethren instead of brothers and sisters. And then we have the NIV, the New International Version from 1978, and it changes we are debtors to we have an obligation. And that's kind of helpful since nowadays debtors almost always mean people who owe money, which isn't the case here. 
And then here's the message published in 2002. So don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent? There's nothing in it for us, nothing at all. The best thing to do is to give it the decent burial and get on with your new life. Well, that is different. Remember how I've told you that the message is an interpretation, not a translation? The ideas are there, but the words are completely different. And how does author Eugene Peterson get from the flesh to this old do-it-yourself life? Okay, one more translation, the Common English Bible from 2011. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it isn't an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. All right, this time flesh has become selfishness. Are you ready to throw up your hands in confusion? Well, instead of doing that, let's, let's, look up, let's look at the Greek. This way, maybe we can try to figure out what Paul may have actually written. And here's what we find. The word translated flesh, it's sarks. And while it can refer to the body, there's another Greek word, somatos, that is more commonly used for body. That's the word Paul uses later in this passage. But sarks has a deeper meaning. It means making decisions according to the self, apart from faith, without God. It means the here and now, what you see is what you get. It means the present reality of the world that tells us that this is all there is. So using this more metaphor, metaphorical understanding of sarks, both the messages, this old do-it-yourself life, and the common English Bible's selfishness fit. So Paul is not censuring our bodies. Rather, he's censuring our acting on our own as if all there is is what we see in front of us with no reliance on God whatsoever. If we live according to Sark's selfishness, this old do-it-yourself life, the what you see is what you get, if we live that way, Paul says, we will die. <clears throat> Sark's, he says, leads to a spirit of slavery which leads us into fear, which leads to death. But, Paul says, we have received a spirit of adoption. <clears throat> We are children of God and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And as such, we have hope, hope for what we do not see, hope for the future. Hope versus fear. Living as children of God, as joint heirs with Christ versus living under the power of what you see is what you get, Sarks. We could call it living the lives God gives us versus living the lives the world tells us are all that's possible. Living in fear and resignation versus living into hope and grace. A Sark's life is one where we say, well, that's the way things are. You can't fight City Hall or in the church. We've always done it that way. A life of hope and grace, on the other hand, says, how can this be better? Or what else could we be doing? Representative John Lewis, who just died with his drive for good trouble, seems to me to have lived such a life of hope and grace. A Sark's life is one in which church leaders tell battered wives to stick with their husbands because, well, it's a wife's duty to submit to her husband. A life of hope and grace, on the other hand, helps battered wives find safety and helps abusive husbands control their anger and learn different ways. A Sark's life says, masks make me uncomfortable. You can't make me wear one. But a life of hope and grace says, I love my neighbors and don't want to inadvertently infect anyone. This is something I can do to make the world safer. 
There's more to our lives than the messages of Sark's, what you see is what you get and do it yourself because nobody's gonna help anyway. There's more to our lives than living in fear because God has adopted us as daughters and as sons. God has given us a spirit, not of fear, but of hope, not distress and judgment, but trust. God has given us a spirit that allows us to sense that with God, when we can place our trust in God, it's going to be okay. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Confession of Faith this morning is from the Confession of 1967. Uh, go ahead and mute yourselves. You can read along, but Mary and I are going to kind of go back and forth reading it out loud for everyone. The reconciling work of Jesus was the supreme crisis in the life of humankind. His cross and resurrection become personal crisis and present hope for humans when the gospel is proclaimed and believed. In this experience, the Spirit brings us God's forgiveness, moves us to respond in faith, repentance, and obedience, and initiates the new life in Christ. The new life takes shape in a community in which people know that God loves and accepts them in spite of what they are. They therefore accept themselves and love others, knowing that no one has any ground on which to stand except God's grace. The members of the church are emissaries of peace and seek the good of all in cooperation with powers and authorities in politics, culture, and economics. But they have to fight against pretensions and injustices when these same powers endanger human welfare. Their strength is in their confidence that God's purpose, rather than people's schemes, will finally prevail. Life in Christ is life eternal. The resurrection of Jesus is God's sign that God will consummate God's work of creation and reconciliation beyond death and bring to fulfillment the new life begun in Christ. Amen and amen. This is the time when we all begin to offer up our prayers to God as the body of Christ. Um, what prayers would you like to raise this morning? I will say that I've just learned that a former colleague of mine has been uh, diagnosed with bipolar disease. And so I would ask for your prayers for Keith. What other prayers? My daughter. Oh, I'm sorry. My daughter uh, 
uh, my elder daughter, the one that lives here in Cincinnati, has Crohn's disease, and she recently was admitted to the to uh, she didn't actually go in the hospital. It was outpatient, but uh, they they lanced a uh, an abscess that was very painful for her. Uh, Crohn's is in incurable, and it's also uh, it's it's a disease where the immune the uh, uh, the immune system attacks the body. So it's, it's really wacko. And uh, she was on a very good uh, uh, immune system, uh, medication. a medication that disabled her immune system. And then some other complications came up. So she's still, they're still trying to find another medication for her. So She's uh, suffering a lot, a lot of pain. And she's got three little boys, so I've been babysitting a lot overnights. So I've been getting lots of grandpa points for that. But uh, <laughs> please pray for Cami. K A M I. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I have a prayer for Anthony. Um, I was just like to ask for continued prayers for Anthony Bell. He did um, call me, or he texted me, I believe on Friday, and sent me a message that he is cancer free. So congratulations to Anthony. He is cancer free, yeah. but please keep him in your prayers. God. Lord, in Good. your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hmm. You ask Anthony if he'll do the sermon next week? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 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 Pastor. <laughs> Other prayers. I'd like to lift up Deb, uh, Bev and Dave Cook in prayer. I just, uh, I think I saw Dave on Facebook and uh, or something, and they came to my mind, and I haven't seen him in a long time, and I really miss him and hope they're doing well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Mm -hmm. Any more prayers? I like prayer. Charlotte? I like prayer for my uh, great grandson, Caden. He had surgery last week, and he he is uh, doing much better. They said that now he'll only be having it every three months instead of every couple of weeks. So that was a real blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like a prayer for my uh, sister-in-law, Melissa, who is, uh, took an assignment. She's an RN. She took an assignment uh, to work in, uh, in Arizona, which is uh, one of the hotspots currently. So keep Melissa in your prayers, please. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, we, we start with thanksgiving. We thank you for your gifts to us, your gifts of grace and hope, for adopting us as your beloved children, for loving us no matter what else we're doing. And we thank you for the gifts of Anthony being cancer free. For people that we know who no longer have to be in the hospital. For the 102 year old woman mentioned in the blade this morning who has survived the coronavirus. Help us to keep seeing the good things in life, O oh Lord. Help us to keep turning to you. We pray, O oh Lord, for so many things in our world and in our country that have us worried. That coronavirus numbers are rising in 40 states, including Ohio. that COVID-19 and its care has been politicized so that we don't seem to be able to move forward. 
that schools are being pushed to open up before the safety of teachers and students can be assured. that we are all worried about getting this virus, about being sick, and we're all tired of staying at home. We pray, O oh Lord, that this country may, may turn a corner in so many ways from attacks on the Postal Service to the abduction of people in Portland, Oregon by secret police federal agents, by more algae blooms in Lake Erie and more pollution here and there. It does seem, O oh Lord, like it's a what you see is what you get world, and yet we turn to you. We turn to you and say, God, we trust in you. We trust in your grace. We trust in your love. We place our hope, our hope that is your hope, your gift to us. We place our hope in you. All of this we pray in the name and the spirit of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank all of you for continuing to support the church during this time. And if you have been forgetting about it, to remind you that you can send a check in any old time, and we'd be happy to have that. Let us join together in our prayer of dedication and thanksgiving here. Your steadfast love is but one of the many gifts you pour into us. Our offerings are but a part of the ways in which we can serve you and your people. Bless them and bless us to the ministries of healing and hope. Amen and amen. And we have an anthem, Thou Art God, recorded and sung, sung and recorded by Lydia and Jeff.
Amen and amen. Go into the world, my friends, even if it's only to your front porch, and spread the love of the Lord, the hope that the Lord gives us to all in your life. And know that always, always, today and tonight and forevermore, the Lord our God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer is with you and blesses you. Amen. as always wonderful to see you all and you can now unmute and just talk to anybody <laughs> 